I've got a couple of miniature PV modules here, and we're going to spend some time today talking about PV DC array circuit configurations and talking a little bit about the behavior of modules in a PV system. I'll pick up my PV module again, and I, I wanted to read you just a couple things on the specifications for it. This is rated at uh, 5 volts. It produces 2.5 watts, and it should produce a current of about 0.5 amps or 500 milliamps. We're going to discover in my lab it doesn't new produce near that much because we're at low light conditions, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Before we get to this, I wanted to talk a little bit about what you can see in a PV array and what to expect. The very first thing is, and this should appear on your screen, it would be the building, basic building blocks for a PV array. And you'll see the very first thing is I'm showing a PV module, which is one collection of PV cells on one module, I call it, but you will notice most people call it a panel instead of a module. You'll find I continue to call it a module, and I guess we can live with that. We'll have to. And the PV module directly converts sunlight into electrical energy in the form of direct current, or DC current. And that's important to note, and we'll discuss that a little bit more later. If you connect two or more modules together in a series fashion, they call that a string in the PV industry. And then finally, the array is the total collection of interconnected solar modules for a system. It would be the complete collection of all the solar PV modules in that system. And then the next thing that should pop up on the screen here is a DC string system showing you an example. And in this example, I have modules rated at 40 volts and nine amperes of current per module. So each module is 40 volts and each produces nine amperes of current under optimum conditions. And you'll notice I have them connected in a string in a series fashion. And you can see by doing so, the, the value of the voltage adds together for that circuit. And you now have 160 volts because the voltage adds together, but the current remains the same value as one module. And the interesting thing about that as you'll find this very same configuration is true for batteries. It works for transformer windings and in coils and that sort of thing. It's very common throughout the electrical industry, but in PV systems, you will find these string systems uh, in a lot of systems. There's other type of systems. We'll talk about uh, microinverter systems here in a moment, but this is really probably the most common thing you'll see. Next up on the screen, you should see a drawing that shows a string connected to an inverter. And um, in talking about PV systems, they are producing DC current from the modules themselves, but tying into your homes, they need to be converted to an AC signal for everything in our house. And the voltage has to be changed and it has to be turned into an AC to go into the house. And so if you look, I have the two conductors from the array going to the, an inverter. And the example I have here is we have one that's operating at a voltage of 300 volts DC to 450 volts DC. And the thing to understand about a PV system is the modules are producing a variable voltage and current that needs to be accepted by the inverter at that range. And it will then convert to whatever voltage you're connected to at the house and match that so it's usable at the house. And uh, it's important that the PV array has the proper voltage to be tied into the proper inverter and that hot all has to be matched. Up on the screen now, you should see a drawing that shows uh, an array that has both series and parallel connections. And let's talk about that for just a moment. In uh, the electrical world, it's much easier to deal with high voltages than it is to deal with high current values on most systems. The higher you go with current values, the bigger the wires have to be, the bigger the switches have to be, everything has to be bigger, there's more heat involved. And so with PV systems, it's much more attractive to have a pretty high voltage and a low current value. That being said, as our systems became bigger and bigger, we, we had pretty high voltages, but we still needed more current. So we, just, we started seeing systems where you would have more than one string parallel together. So the, the strings would produce the proper voltage you needed. And then when you parallel those together, you start adding the, the, the current together. So you would match your, your voltage, but add current as you put more and more strings together. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as we do the lab. Uh, and, and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. I want to do just a quick overview of what we just talked about. And so up on the screen, you'll see I have 
uh, drawings of two systems. The first one is the string system up on top, showing you have all your modules connected together in a series string, going to one inverter, which then services your home or, or whatever you're, you're servicing with the system. Below that, you'll see what I have in my system, which should pop up on your screen. I have a pole mounted system and I have micro inverters. And instead of having one inverter, each module has a single inverter attached to the DC circuit at the back of the modules. And so the uh, micro inverters produce AC current and then ship it off into my house through basically parallel connections of all those micro inverters connected together then coming into my house. And I wanna close this, this uh, section of the training by talking about the output of a PV system. And what you need to understand is uh, you really need good sunlight to have good production. And so up on the screen now, you'll see uh, captures from two of my monitoring system captures from different days. And you'll see on the very top, on a good sunny day, you'll get really good production all the way. You know, it starts off with the sun rising, you'll get a little bit of production. And as the sun gets higher and higher and higher and higher, you'll get better production. And then as the sun starts to set, it drops back down again. The interesting thing about that is the voltage rises pretty close to the highest value, even with just a little bit of light, but you don't get a lot of current production. It really, you really have to have good sunlight to have good current production. And the very bottom drawing there, you'll notice that you don't have the bell curve. And what you're looking at is you're seeing where clouds eroded production because you, you, did, you lost sunlight on directly onto the modules and so you don't get near the production. So sun, good access to good sunlight is critically important with these systems and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And finally, the last thing I want to say is as we go into the lab, we're going to be using these modules. Like I said, we are not going to see very high current values because we just don't have very good light in here and uh, it doesn't matter. The principle is all the same and you'll see it still works out. We just don't have very high current values. So without further ado, Let's uh, get this module, and we're just going to determine what kind of voltage it produces right now, just laying flat like this, and what kind of current it produces. And remember, I said it was a direct current, so our measurements will have to be in the DC mode. So I will switch to a DC voltage measurement mode, and you should see a bunch of zeros showing up there. And it is direct current, so I have to make sure I'm, I'm polarity sensitive. So I have a red lead here for positive, and I will hook this here and see what happens here. When I do now I'll do the, the positive, or excuse me, the negative on the black side. And you can see I am producing like 3.244 volts uh, from this module. We're going to call it three-ish when we do our experiment because some of the modules are a little bit different and we don't need to be exact and you'll, you'll see how it comes out in the end. But one thing I want you to notice is my partner's gonna switch off the lights and watch what happens to the voltage. Okay, you can see it dropped to 2.46, something like that. When he turns the lights back on, it goes back up again. And I will show you furthermore, when I, when I add more light to this with my flashlight, you can also see what it does. You can see it went up to four, four volts. It makes a lot of difference what, what you get for light. And that's uh, really true when it comes to current. So I'm going to do a current measurement now on the same module and we'll see what happens. So I'll disconnect. Okay, you'll notice we had a little splice here uh, in between my voltage and current measurements. I uh, had a little, a little issue here, but let's do our current measurement now. And the first thing we have to do to do a current measurement is we have to change our lead and go over to this port. And when we do so, we're going to bring the current inside the meter basically as part of the circuit and measure the current output. And remember, we are talking about direct current. So I will switch this to direct current measurement mode, and then I will hook it up again, polarity sensitive. Black to black and red to red. And you should see we have 0, 0 0.1 amperes of current flow, which is one milliamp, one one thousandth of an amp. Not a lot of current, but it is producing current. And you can see what happens with shading. When I shade this, watch what happens to the current. It completely drops off the chart. I mean, the, the Production is very, very minimal now. And when I release it again, you can see I go up to 0 0.001 again. And watch what happens again when I use the flashlight. 
And now you can see we've doubled it. We went from 0 0.001 to 0 0.002. It's dramatic what happens when you have light striking and when you don't have light striking. You can see as I move this across what happens. And that's kind of what's happening when the sun is striking my array. As you can see in the bell curve, it kind of shows you how that works. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to drop the table down and we will look at series and parallel connections and compare them. And um, you'll see exactly how all of this works. The very first thing we'll talk about is a series connection for the PV modules. And you should see on your screen the same drawing I have in my hands. And we've already determined that each of the modules is going to produce what we're going to say is three-ish volts. And we already measured the current value and it was 0 0.001 amperes. Down below, I have two quantities not shown. It's the total DC voltage and the total current. Like I mentioned before, when we're connecting in series, the current should remain at a value of 0 0.001 amperes, but the voltage should add together for the four of these modules. So we'll go ahead and drop down and take a look at the modules here. Okay, we've got our, our string all put together here. We have four modules connected in series. And if you look at the modules, you can see I have the positive connected to the negative adjacent to it, positive to negative here, positive to negative here, and that leaves me with a red lead here and a black lead here where we can test our voltage, and that would be our voltage output. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now remember, we're talking about a direct current we're measuring here, for, or voltage, I should say, we're measuring. So we'll go to DC voltage, and then I will connect my black here. And we'll bring the red lead over on this side and connect. Okay, and we are producing well, that says 13, and like I said, we were talking 3-ish, but watch, I can change that, and we'll make it 12-ish, just by a little bit of shading. And that's really what's happening in this all the time. It's always modulating. So our voltage, as you can see, added together, but our current is the next thing. It should remain the same at point 0.1, and let's find out. So let me turn this thing off, and we'll have to reconfigure it. So I'll disconnect here, and then we have to change our multimeter to read for current measurements, and we also have to change our lead. It has to come over here. We'll change our lead over there, and we actually, in this measurement mode, we're bringing the current inside the meter to measure it. And we'll do the same thing. We will connect our black here and our red over here. And you can see we are producing zero Point, or, or, yeah, 0 0.001 amperes, just like we did before, one milliamp. We did not increase the current value. We only can increase the voltage value. For our next configuration, we're going to be looking at a series parallel connection to see what happens, and uh, we'll see you in a minute. We're going to look at a series parallel string connection for our modules now, and you should see on your screen the same drawing I'm looking at, and you'll notice I have Four modules, two on top connected in series, two on bottom on the bottom connected in series, but then the two series connections are connected in parallel. And we remember we had a DC voltage for each module of somewhere around three-ish volts and a DC measured value of 0 0.001 amperes of current. And what we should probably expect with this, or what we should expect, is somewhere around six volts output now because we have on the very bottom string, we have six volts there. The top string, we have six volts, and then we connected those in parallel. The parallel connection will double what we have for our, our current because we've now, we have this, this parallel connection. So we should see, expect to see something around six volts on the voltage output and a current output of 0 0.002 amps. And let's find out what happens. We'll drop down here. Now on the table, you'll see we have the, the parallel series connection that we had in the drawing. Uh, you can see it all pretty clearly, I hope. I did provide two leads that I, I can easily take a measurement from just for the sake of measurement. So let's, let's do that right now. The first thing we'll do is take a measurement of the voltage. And remember, we're DC, so I will switch it to DC for voltage. And I will connect my black to the black side and the red to the red side. And we have 
volts, which was just what we expected. We were looking for about six volts, and that's just what we predicted. The next thing we'll do is take a current measurement, and we should expect to see 0 0.002 instead of 0 0.001 because of our parallel connection. So let me turn this off. I will disconnect and reconfigure. And we have to move our lead again here. We'll switch to DC current measurement mode and we'll hook it up again. Okay, now you see we did get what we expected. We have 0 0.002 uh, amperes of output and you'll see what happens when I shade it. It drops down to one. You know, it just shows you again how important the, it is that your solar PV system has good access to light. Um, I hope that was helpful. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and check out the links we have below. Come back for new videos. We should be adding content each week. And finally, visit the Taking Measure website.